This node over here also can see that storage under the, the cluster shared folder space and he can actually directly write as well direct IO. Now he can't do all he can't do metadata updates, he can't grow files or shrink files, but he can do direct IO to so block level data changes. So let's actually see these in action, see what the network traffic actually looks like. So I'm going to jump over to my box again. And I've actually got, if I jump over here, cluster shared volume, cluster storage, volume one. And I've got a number of folders configured. And remember, cluster storage um, is actually LUNs that are, that are available within the cluster that all nodes can access simultaneously. In this example, if I look at my cluster shared volumes, I have this one cluster disk that's actually mounted on the other node, VSO2. This is VSO1. So what's actually going to happen is, let's see how the network traffic works. So we bring up Task Manager again. Not all data can be written with Direct.io. So file copies use SMB. SMB can't actually use Direct.io. So I'm just going to take a 600 meg file. And this is actually going to show us this virtual adapter here, which one of these is it actually bound to? Because any spike here has to go to a physical network card. So when I paste this 600 meg file, we're going to see a spike. And sure enough, that local area connection, which is the network fault tolerant driver, is spiking. And at the same time, so is cluster NIC. So I know that the network fault tolerant driver is actually bound to cluster NIC, which is what I want. Um, I've actually configured the, the metrics of my adapters with specific values to actually force it to use cluster NIC for my network traffic. So that proves something interesting there. If we do file copies on cluster storage, it actually goes over the network fault tolerant driver. It didn't do direct IO, which would have shown as writes on the iSCSI NIC. It didn't use the iSCSI, it actually used the cluster fault tolerant driver. So, what does all traffic show in this network fault tolerant driver? Well, the answer is no. So, let's say I actually go in here and mount an additional, a separate LUN. I'm just going to connect to this guy. So if I now jump over to storage, I have an additional LUN over here. I'm just going to bring online. So again, this is another iSCSI connection, separate iSCSI, but this time he owns, he has this disk locally available. If I do a copy to this test drive, well, I would expect to see the traffic directly on iSCSI. So it's writing, writing, and absolutely, I'm just not seeing any traffic on those guys, I just see it on the iSCSI NIC. So, where does Direct.io come into it then? So, what I've got over here is, let's look at a virtual machine. And this is a Vista box. So, what I'm going to do now is a file copy again. And I'm going to copy and paste within this guy um, from a network driver, network drive. And it's 
pasting a 600 meg file. Now this time it should be using DirectIO. It's, there might be minimal network fault tolerant driver if it's expanding a file or NTFS permissions, but it should be actually writing directly to the iSCSI, which is exactly what we're seeing. There's no real traffic on the cluster NIC or the local area connection. Why I am seeing is the iSCSI NIC is getting busy, which is as expected. So that proves the direct IO theory. So if a virtual machine is doing um, writes to the disk that's not extending, it does use the clustered shared volume direct IO capability and does those writes directly to the iSCSI storage. It doesn't have to go over the network fault tolerant driver. If I'm doing operations such as a defrag, a backup, anything like that, then as we saw previously, absolutely that guy then goes over this network fault tolerant driver which is actually locally bound to this separate NIC. And this really does stress the importance of getting your network configuration correct. Um, I'm just going to disconnect this guy. Offline. Because if we don't have the right networks we're going to hit performance issues. So if we consider what I've got on this box, this is really what you need to emulate. You need a dedicated network card that you're going to use for your cluster storage. Not cluster storage, cluster communications. Because any operations, any non-direct I.O. is going to go over that network. We can't just have some crossover cable, uh, some low speed network. Don't worry about the speed it says here, this 100 megabits. It's an arbitrary number Microsoft picked. Uh,